Well, thank you for joining me today for today's podcast and an upcoming issue of Hepatology. We have uh, Dr. Eric Ishida here today to discuss with us concordance of sustained virologic response for 12 and 24 weeks post-treatment with sofosbuvir containing regimens for hepatitis C. So welcome and thanks for joining us today. Oh, thank you, Dr. Harrison. Well, today uh, I'd like to talk briefly about this concept of looking at sustained viral, viral response rate post week 12 versus post week 24. So in the interferon containing days when we treated with interferon all the way back to 2002 or with pegylated interferon, we've used SVR24 to define our cure rates. And there's well validated information to tell us that, that we can use the word cure uh, if we check virus 24 weeks after completing therapy and the virus is negative. Now, with the newer direct-acting antivirals, it seems there's evidence that maybe we can shorten that time interval to 12 weeks and still have very similar results and can still use that word cure uh, and feel confident about that. So tell us a little bit about your study and, and how you went about organizing it and collecting the data. Well, the study itself is, um, it was a pretty simple concept, but I think it's an important one. Um, almost every local conference in Canada, there's, there's always somebody who asks how valid is an SVR12 and then why is the SVR12 used by the FDA and Health Canada uh, as an appropriate endpoint for clinical trials. And to date, um, there's been one study by Dr. Chen published in Gastroenterology in 2013, kind of right in the middle of when we were doing this one, uh, took a little bit of the wind out of our sails briefly, and I say only briefly, that seem to validate the protease inhibitors um, with peginfron ribavirin uh, using SVR12. And this one is a kind of a logical uh, extension of that because uh, the generalizability of an SVR12 in theory is specific to that particular drug combination. And so in this one, the database of, um, of the five studies uh, with Savosvir, all of which uh, had kind of first year physics kind of names like valence and uh, neutrino, positron, fusion, and fission. I, I think I got all five. And basically what we did, uh, and I thank my co-authors, uh, and I thank Gilead for giving us access to the, to the data, is to simply look at the 863 people who were enrolled, of which 779 actually had end of treatment, week four post-treatment, week 12 post-treatment, and week 24 post-treatment, and simply looked at, did some number crunching, and determined what the actual concordance was. So a relatively simple study, retrospective yes. in nature, but providing very useful information. Oh, for sure. Um, the, the bottom line of the study is that the SVR12 um, is an appropriate endpoint. Uh, of the 779 people, uh, who had data for all, all the markers, um, it was an incredible 99.7% of SVR12s achieved in SVR24. Uh, to put it in uh, perspective, there were only two people who relapsed uh, after achieving an SVR12, and both were like genotype 3, uh, non-serotic, um, previous, previous treatment experienced patients. And, uh, I think that's a very powerful number that patients can ha patients and clinicians can now have confidence that the SVR12 is the same as or similar to an SVR24 and for all intents and purposes for the vast majority uh, indicates cure. Now this was with sofosbuvir, a very potent nucleotide polymerase inhibitor. Do you think the same can be said for regimens that contain other direct-acting antivirals, maybe not including sofosbuvir, such as NS5A agents and protease inhibitors? Uh, that's an excellent question. Um, I personally think that these results, when you look at not only these results, but the one that Dr. Chen published in Gastroenterology, suggests that this, the property of the virus is that SVR12 is equivalent to an SVR24. Um, I would encourage all the clinical trials with the different products to, to actually measure this, but I suspect that they're going to find the same thing. Do you think we can go shorter than SVR12? Why not look at SVR8 or 6? Um, to some extent, you know, the determination of when you, when you make the decision to, to check 
the uh, check the uh, hepatitis C RNA post treatment is it, somewhat arbitrary. Uh, you, could, you could say, well, okay, why do they go with SVR 24? Why don't they go SVR 23 and a half? I mean, you could play these games. Um, there is a somewhat empirical decision. Um, I'm confident that you know, if you want SVR 10, you could probably get it. This study showed that SVR 4, however, um, was a not quite a robust uh, endpoint. Uh, the concordance between SVR 4 and SVR 24, sorry, SVR 12 was only was 98 percent, which is still excellent, but still means that 2 percent failed. Do you think we're ever going to get to the point with direct acting antivirals that once we get virus negative at the end of treatment, we're done? We don't need to check anymore? Um, I think, I, I think that, is the, um, that is the ultimate dream. And to be honest with you, the way things are going, when you look at just a few short years ago, we were using like just pig and ribavirin, and we were happy when 41 percent or something of the G1s cleared the virus. Uh, you know. I think that it's getting to the point where there will be a drug combination that an end of treatment will equal cure. Right. Well, I would just like to wrap up by saying and concluding with this, I think we do have strong evidence now that checking viral loads 12 weeks after completion of antiviral therapy, at least with sofosbuvir containing regimens, is just as efficacious as going 12 more weeks and checking an SVR24. It will be insightful to see if these same results can be replicated with other direct-acting antivirals in other classes, but I think it's very promising and sheds light on, on the fact, and we can give um, healthcare providers uh, encouragement that SVR12 is just, uh, just as good as SVR24, at least with sovospivir-containing regimens. So thank you very much for joining us today. Super, thank you. Thank you for the invitation.